Hi guys, today I have a, a, a bit of kitchen equipment to um, take a video about. So this is milk frother and uh, what it does it's actually make, uh, makes um, make milk to foam or foamy milk to be used in the beverages. So uh, I always wondering how these uh, devices work and uh, you know how they look inside. So what do we have here? We have this uh, thing it's like a kettle of some sort and the base so base is obviously just to supply power the kettle goes like this on the base and it powers up uh, by those buttons so we don't really need to, to look at the base uh, so uh, what's inside here there is a um, uh, like a like a pot of some sort like a cup let's say and inside the uh, always look actually like a pitcher so inside this pitcher we have like a, a spring uh, mixer and this spring mixer somehow rotates and heat this thing also heats up the pitcher and makes milk uh, foamy milk looks pretty simple but the question is how does it rotate because there is no actually motor of any kind over here right it just uh, seems to be uh, contactless but maybe there is something inside so let's take a look how it works so just to say what what's uh, what kind of thing is this this is sultan um a milk frother so i got it like recently from walmart it was uh, a bit of a on a uh, bit of a sale and i just decided to go for it because kind of my coffee uh coffee machine uh milk frother start underperforming so decided to go for this one and get less hustle to have nicely uh, frost milk so anyways uh, beside the point that's pretty simple um, device in operation uh, if you want to just uh, whip up the milk uh, and but make it cold you use this button if you want a hot use this button pretty much it the only thing when you use, use hot it has the period of cool down so it shuts down when it's overheated and also the, another side another bad side if you uh, froze a lot of hot milk it start um, kind of carbonating and burning to, to, to the internals of this pitcher but that's pretty much it so actually I noticed this thing was a bit poorly done because once I had the chance to use Nespresso one uh, and it was much much nicely done than this one so for example this one the base kind of shifts around even the like, dish is pretty much you know uh, less than months old um, so we're gonna take a look what's going on there as well so uh, let's crack it open it's pretty easy to open there are three screws around here they are Phillips screws and they are really easy oh this they are just soft toppers I'm pretty sure no any kind of metal inserts plastic yeah well that well, was easy to get in so what do we have here very interesting <laughs> And hilarious to see that ground is not even connected. Ha! Huh. Wow, as uh, kind of safety concerns. So over here, okay, let's uh, look at this. So this barrel is not connected. Interesting. Oh, uh, X explains it. Look at this one. So there's nothing to connect it to. Yeah. Technically, if there is some sort of problem and there is a power on this uh, stainless steel pitcher, we may be shocked a bit. But anyways, let's take a look what's inside. So what do we have here? We have a transformer and some electronics and obviously a motor. So uh, looks like we just have a regular motor and probably coupling done via magnets. Uh, that was the probably the easiest way of uh, doing that. So uh, this thing has magnetic, so probably some kind of magnet inside, and uh, this rotor, uh, this motor rotates magnet and the coupling done just through magnetic field. This is as simple as you can get, and probably the, that part of a pitcher is aluminium because I'm not sure if that will be working properly through steel. Unless stainless steel doesn't really affect magnetic field, I do not know. But let's dig a bit further. So let's open this so there's four more screws 
four. Yeah, there is probably one under this transformer, and transformer is input 120 and output 9 volts. Obviously, there is no fusing, and oh, there is a fuse. This thing has thermal fuse actually. That's good. Two thermal fuses. So, this thing has thermal fuse over here. Oh shit, there's not enough light. Sorry. Over there, there is a thermal fuse. And there is, I'm pretty sure this is regular fuse over there. So, um, I'm gonna take a look at that as well. I'm actually gonna just crack it open just right now. This, whatever fuse it is. So, yeah, it's clearly a fuse right there. I'm not sure if I uh, probably would be able to. Ah, oh, you can just. And just disconnect this guy. Oh wow, that's really no. So here's the fuse. It's not the heater element, that's the fuse. And it is 15 amp fuse, 120 volt. Nothing special, but we have a fuse. That's really good. Not soldered, it's clamped. Which is good too. So here is our fuse nice there is also a thermal fuse over there which probably has some sort of uh, set temperature to uh, shut off very interesting it also it actually has screws from screwed in from on uh, from over that side so this pretty much means that we can actually take off this contraption at all okay let's go further must say the screws are actually unscrew pretty easily though that's mean <laughs> that's all kind of assembled really nearly or very quickly the screw got cat caught by the motor okay here we are so there was no screw on the transformer I must say Okay, it all opens up pretty simple, just like that. It's stuck somewhere. Let me see where. Uh huh. So this thermal fuse has to be disconnected. Is it? Oh no, that's a heater element here. Okay, the blue wires go to... So those two go to the heater element. And two others go to the uh, thermal fuse. That's all, actually. That's pretty much all. So what do we have here? Okay, so we have a relay which is not surprising because you need to have a relay for that we have two LEDs obviously two buttons to control modes and a microcontroller of a sort we have also probably power regulation because the one two three four uh, diodes probably uh, forming a uh, rectifying bridge over here um, this I don't know if this microcontroller or uh, power regulator but there is uh, some more circuit over there which can be power regulator. I think there is also optocoupler. Is it? It's really hard to see. I'm, or I'm crazy. No, it's just just a diode. Okay. Let me focus a bit closer. All right. So I uh, will repeat again. So there are four diodes probably forming a uh, yeah, it's coming from the secondary of the transformer 9 volt. So it's they are forming the uh, bridge rectifier. Uh, there is a chip over here. I uh, yet to see what is that. Okay. Uh huh. So uh, we need some sort of dro dro uh, someone who would drive the motor. So this two goes to the motor. Also, we have uh, one diode over here transistor over here and that's pretty much it hmm interesting there is no more active components there's only one transistor and uh, some kind of chip over here so I'm not sure if there is a special 
oh, there is one transistor over here, so two transistors. So that might be a part of a switching circuit for this, um, for the motor. And this one, I don't know, maybe for relay actually. I'm wondering like if it's just nine volts, they go directly to the uh, microcontroller or whatever it is. Let me figure this out. I'll try to pull disconnect if it's I don't know how easy it will be possible to disconnect those reds. Wow. So it's not really possible, easily, uh, easy to disconnect. I decided to, to have a bit closer look uh, on this uh, uh, controller board of the milk frother. So, uh, you know, you know um, during this closer look, I realized a few things. First of all, uh, the microchip is powered not directly uh, with 9 volt, but I think it has the, uh, the it, it, there is a part, there is a voltage regulation circuit over here based on the Zener diode, this uh, current regulating resistor, because there is no actually a any active uh, voltage regulating component, so I assume it's based on Zener resistor, the capac those two capacitors, and this uh, small capacitor over here. So this probably, uh, again, I, can, I cannot power this, well, technically I can, but I don't want to uh, whip up some kind of contraption in order to power all that and measure actual voltage. This may actually make it 5 volt uh, or 3.3 volt to power this guy, so I don't know the value of this Zener in order to actually derive it um, and figure this out. But uh, this stuff is a part of voltage regulation circuit for the microcontroller and you know put to obviously to power LEDs and things like that and uh, trigger the relay. Uh, uh, interesting fact that the relay is actually says 12 volt but we have 9 here so it's another something uh, uh, to consider uh, if if maybe I'm Maybe it's enough to actually drive this relay with uh, less voltage, but that's what we get. Yeah, interesting enough. So, uh, so this uh, circuit to actually power the stuff up. Uh, there is also a transistor and capacitor over uh, resistor over here. It's a part of a motor driving circuit. So I believe microcontroller actually, uh, which is unnamed in case you're interested in probably the cheapest microcontroller you can get in china in order to do this uh, job but it's it, it drives this transistor in order to actually drive the motor or essentially turn on and off uh, the uh, motor there is another transistor over here which probably drives the relay uh, and LEDs are just directly th 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 this LED coupled with this transistor so essentially when you press the button a a a a the relay gets powered and this LED works uh, and if you... there is no sec... I'll take my words back so those two depends on the button press, so that they're probably driven directly by microcontroller and the transistor and diode is a part of a relay driving circuit. So when relay is on, it actually activates those two switches um, and uh, complete the circuit and powers all uh, heating and uh, uh, the, the powers the heating uh, elements. Uh, so the the one quite important thing to understand here is probably uh, how this thing works. Uh, crucial part how this works is that this is thermal fuse. If th this thermal fuse is a part of um, uh, thermal cutoff fuse, a part of uh, uh, the active uh, circuit, and if this guy is triggered, uh, the whole contraption is losing power. So meaning that you power it up, it works, works, works until the thing triggered. If it's triggered, that's it. It's shut off. Everything is shut off. It just cuts off the power from uh, from its own. And after a while, if the, the, the thermal fuse is actually um, untriggered, I don't know how you say it, <laughs> untriggered, it will, it can, like, it allow the current to flow and you can 
start this device. So a little bit of extra bonus video. So I put it together and it seems to be working. Uh, I just want to say that this is not the safest device I ever seen. So wires are just flopping in the breeze everywhere and there is no um, ground connected to any metallic parts exposed so making this device kind of unsafe if there is some internal stuff pokes into into this metal barrel being like live or neutral but still pretty bad uh, as it can shock people also um, well it has a fuse it has a thermal fuse but the absence of uh, ground plane uh, sorry ground being connected uh, it's kind of meh uh, and uh, from the safety standard point also, the connections inside are not always insulated. So, for example, there is a few power um, uh, around that relay. If you remember, uh, it was actually, and when I put it all together, the, those wire, which actually carry 120 volts, end up really, really close to this stainless steel barrel, stainless steel pitcher from inside. So, another problem. Well, they are insulated, but still. So, in the very bottom, at the heater, heater element, he connectors which connects the heater, they have no insulation whatsoever they are pretty close to uh, again to the to the picture and to the actually uh, aluminium heating base like you know three millimeter clearance I think it's kind of you know bad design so that uh, they have to be have to have some sort of insulation of, uh, of any kind so in general it's this device works but after looking inside I'm kind of meh I'm not sure uh, whatever standards this thing passed, it has some standards like whatever intertech and blah blah blah. Um, I, I don't know. I won't be using. And also, obviously, it's not waterproof of any kind, like any way. So even water dripping like this, there is a little bit of a lip here. It's like three millimeters. It's still like, you know, water can get in pretty easily or liquid of any kind. Milk whatever one else you want to warm it up uh, so yeah I don't know it doesn't strike uh, much of confidence in me but it works it works and it's cheap so yeah well I'll leave you with that see you next time